Welcome to today's Walking with Wisdom. We're seeking greater light. We need more light today than we had yesterday. And the Word of God promises that the light of God grows brighter until we reach the full light of day. So there's a great promise from God that will serve us well as we seek to engage with him and find those nuggets of wisdom that are within his word that are, will enable us to live better, to live righter, and in ministry to be able to minister more effectively, more powerfully, more constructively, more deliberately. Um, when you are answering the call for ministry, then you're uh, saying that you're progressing forward. You're not looking back. You don't turn back to return to the way things used to be. You are making a decision to progress in your life, now away from just caring for yourself, thinking about yourself, now realizing that God has given you a capacity to be able to do things that will make others' lives better. So, welcome to the ministry. And we're in Psalm 140. And we've been learning things that are necessary for us to be able to have a successful ministry. Today's is essential. It's all about the uh, protection of our minds and controlling the way that we think, uh, thinking right so that we can be right and do right. As a man th thinks in his heart, so is he. Um, here we go, verses 1 to 3. Rescue me, O Lord. Rescue me from evil men. Protect me from men of violence who devise evil plans in their hearts and stir up war every day. They make their tongues as sharp as a serpent's, and the poison of vipers is on their lips. And then it says, Selah. If you do nothing, people will leave you alone. You're inoffensive, you're unobtrusive. Some might say you're insipid if you do nothing. You're not going to arouse attention or earn criticism, but as soon as you step out and begin to do something for God, people will be quick to criticize. You have to be prepared for this, and you've got to guard against it. It says, evil men with evil plans are stirring up a war. And how do they stir up a war? Well, it says through their words. It says the poison of vipers is on their lips. Their tongues are as sharp as serpents. And so their words are the things that are used to try to create a war inside your head. And they would prefer it if there was a war between you and others around you. So this psalm calls for us to Selah. We haven't had a Selah for 59 chapters, not since Psalm 89 and verse 48. And suddenly we get a Selah. So you can't rush past this. God wants you to go deep here, right now, today. He wants to reveal all of the poisonous lies the enemy has sold you. There are thoughts going on inside your head that are causing a civil war. Thoughts that are working against you. Their words, these words are like poison. They're designed to give you a cardiac arrest they're as powerful as a neurotoxin. They can stop you from breathing, stop you from moving, stop you from ministering. There are lies that 
poison your relationships and poison your perspectives on life and poison your ministry. And they blind you so you can no longer see God's beauty in the world and you can't see his glory and you can't see the way that you should go. And everything becomes dark and depressive. When you're anointed for ministry, the anointing upon you is for good. However, if you allow yourself to be controlled by negative thoughts, then you'll be finding that you're going to have that anointing on you that is meant for good, but you're going to be operating in a way wherein that power that is there in your life will be used for evil and not for good. You'll be ministering destruction instead of life. Hmm. If you've got measles, you can tell everybody that you've got mumps, but they're still going to catch measles. What that means is simply, we minister what we are. It's not what we say, it is who we are that gets imparted to those to whom we are ministering. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So our thought processes are so uh, important in this arena. We need God to apply the anti-venom to our spiritual system so that we can minister life rather than death. We need something to come in and destroy that poison that has been running around the lies that have been running around inside our minds and controlling how we live and how we act and how we act out our relationships and how we minister. Yeah, the way we think affects everything. It says in verse 7, O sovereign Lord, my strong deliverer, who shields my head in the day of battle, who shields my head, in the day of battle. So this is talking about the helmet of salvation. Your head needs protection. This is the battle for the mind. This is the battleground. You gotta be vigilant in this arena. Vigilance is even more important now than you are now that you were in ministry than it ever was before because people are dependent upon you being in a good head space. Others are dependent upon you being in a good headspace before you only need to, to care about yourself. You know, you were just dealing with your own life, trying to live your best life that you could live, but just for yourself. But now you're ministering, ministering to those under your care, those who you have responsibility for. Your, your ministry might be uh, something Along the lines of serving teas and coffees, if you're in a negative headspace, you'll have fewer people wanting to drink your tea. And your coffee will taste bitter if you're in a bad headspace. It all counts. It all matters. It all means something. If you're in a worship team, you've got to be in a good headspace. You, no, no point singing praise to God if your mind is thinking, I... I'm not happy. I hate being here. I don't like the, I don't like the piano player. The drummer's out of time. You know, if you God says if you um, come to uh, offer a sacrifice, leave your gift at the altar and make things right with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. You know, I don't care how gifted you are. It doesn't matter how gifted you are if you're out of sorts with those around you because you're in a bad headspace, then you've got to deal with that and then come and offer your gift in a good headspace, in a good heart space, in a good place with God. And that way, your ministry will be ministering life and not death. It'll be ministering help and assistance and construction and not destruction. Yeah. So cleanse your mind. Cleanse your mind with the water of the word. I cleanse mine every day. I need to. 
Sometimes I need to do it seven times a day. Sometimes I need to do it 70 times, seven a day, because sometimes my head just, uh, just gets in my way. So I have to wash it with the water of the word of God to make sure that my head is, my thinking is clean and pure. Uh, keep your thoughts on things above and not on things below, and that way you'll serve in the spirit and not in the flesh. Renew your mind that you might know the good and pleasing and perfect will of God. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Declare the word when it says, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and soundness of mind. Sometimes your thoughts can drive you crazy. Take that word and say, God hasn't given me uh, a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and soundness in my mind. Thinking soundly up there. Yes. Is anybody up there? You want it being a sound mind. Make sure you keep your conscience clean. It says in the word, For how much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death that we might serve the living God? Keep your conscience clean. And then if you do all of that, you can press on to take hold of the prize for which Christ Jesus has taken hold of you. In other words, if you do that, then you can press into your ministry and you can press into your destiny and you can press into your future uh, because, because you have dealt with the things that are going to ruin your progression. You've dealt with all of that stinking thinking. That's putting on the helmet of salvation. So come the day of battle, your thinking had better be right. And the way to identify when you're in a day of battle is simply to assess those occasions when you're assailed with stinking thinking. Thoughts outside of God's word, when they infiltrate your mind and threaten your peace, that's the day of battle. If you're having negative thoughts today, you can be sure that this day is a day of battle. So gird up the loin of your mind. Gird up the loins of your mind and minister according to what God thinks and not according to how the enemy would have you think. And that's the wisdom from God's word. What a nugget. Boy, it's more than a nugget. It's a vein of gold right there. God bless you. I pray right now for your minds that the battle will, battlefield will clear, that the smoke will clear, and that you'll be able to see clearly, that you would have a great Selah moment and God would run through all of the th ways in which you've been thinking, maybe been thinking ever since you were a child. Maybe something happened way back then, just lodged a thought in your mind that has been there may not even have known it was there, but suddenly God brings it to your attention today and it's been robbing you and stopping you from having clarity of thought and from being able to minister as effectively and as powerfully as God would have you minister. I pray for you right now to have victory in your mind and for the, all of the stinking thinking to be removed and for you to think wholesome, holy, godly thoughts, powerful, positive, victory thoughts from this time on you'll be changed people will wonder are you the same person you were depressed yesterday what's going on today what's happened you'll be able to tell them ah i had a sila moment we'll see you again tomorrow